This is a pawpaw. Now it's Asamina triloba and this is um, the same family as the custard apple which is a really well regarded tropical fruit but this is actually a native of North America. It's a cool, temperate, hardy, uh, exotic pawpaw. I mean it's amazing. Um, I've read about these things for years, always want to try them so of course as soon as we got land this is one of the first things I planted. Now at the time they were really difficult to get hold of. Um, I had to go with these from seed and it was the third batch of seed that I went through before I got something that actually grow because once they dry out the viability of pawpaw seed drops phenomenally. I mean they, they really need to be really harvested from the fruit and then either put in a plastic bag straight away to keep them moist and scent or um, they need to be um, uh, you know planted immediately you know with no delay at all so third time lucky i managed to get hold of some and uh, planted them up now these are the forest understory tree so they <laughs> they grow in the shade to begin with for a few years and then eventually of course a parent tree or another tree will die and release some of the canopy and they'll get more light and then they'll grow and start producing you know fruit crops but uh yeah if you haven't got them in that sort of environment and keeping them indoors especially to begin with um yeah, they need to be kept partially shaded so these are actually in their third year now so they're ready to go out they're actually you know mature enough they can cope with the direct sun you know like we got today um but you know to begin with they spent a couple of years under the bench in sort of you know dappled light without that direct sunlight so you know it's been a difficult thing to bring on now we've got two pots of these see there's the other one and each of these has got two in I'm not going to separate them. Um, they tend to grow in clumps in, uh, you know, their natural range. But even if that's not optimal for them, we might well end up having to cull them back to, you know, one per pot. That's fine. Um, because in the meantime, you know, they'll support and give each other a bit of protection. And then we'll just cull back to the, the healthiest one. But um, they're very, very susceptible to uh, root damage. They really don't like having the roots disturbed. So what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to... Um, basically dig a hole, plant the whole pot, tamp down all around it, uh, make it really good and firm, take the whole pot out, take the double root ball out of the pot carefully. You know, this is fairly dry, so it's fairly, can, you know, fairly dense, you know, it's not going to disintegrate. And then just basically put that into the hole and then water it. I'm not going to tamp around it. I'm not going to add anything. I'm just going to put mulch on top of it and call it good. Because if we disturb the roots on these, they really don't like it. Uh, we are going to put some guards on them just for voles, but they'll be fairly short ones. So I'm going to use some very short canes just to hold that in place. So I do, again, minimum root disturbance. Um, we'll see how we go with them. Uh, you, as I say, these were very difficult to get hold of. But now, just in the past couple of years since these went in, for the last few years since these went in, um, they're actually available now from fairly mainstream online nurseries. So that's cool. You, know, you don't have to start these from seeds anymore. So I'm going <sighs> to... The thing is as well, they, they do vary hugely in taste apparently. Now these uh, seeds from, uh, you know, nice eating varieties. So they stand a decent chance of being a good, you know, a good pawpaw, but no guarantees, you know. I have only got four of them and potentially that will be two by the time they reach fruiting age. So, you know, at best. So, you know, I can't guarantee these are going to be great eating pawpaws, but I can buy some improved genetics, um, uh, you know, a, name cultivar varieties and I can plant them and you know I, this isn't an everything or nothing deal I suppose is what I'm saying so right I'm gonna get these in the ground now in terms of positioning I'm up in the top food forest so I'm between two of the pods and we're basically putting it here now to give you some context that way is north south is behind me in that direction near it we have this this is a flowering quince that's done really well that was put in last year we've got that's a cherry tree that's a pear and that's an apple so i think there's room for one really nice smallish overstory tree here um deciduous so it won't cast too much shade in winter down in the house systems so oh and another one we've got a teeny tiny little trifoliate orange we'll see how they do so so far so good with that and then we've got a couple of things like uh, a buddleia for bringing pollinator attractants. And we've also got things like, um, you can see, the comfrey is just starting to come through now as, uh, as a mulch species. So they need to be divided up at some point. Got a load of them to do. So, yeah, this is the perfect spot, I think. And then aligning the track here, each of those canes going all the way around has got a black current under it. 
and that there is the raspberry cane system on those wires so I'm going to put it in here and uh, we're going to mulch it heavily and mark it with a cane and we'll see how they do but I'll just show you how I plant these things so that's the hole dug but that's a bit deeper than I need it so I'm going to backfill with a bit of material still a bit low so I'll chuck a bit more in so look so that's about perfect so at this point I'm gonna just bring all the I'm gonna break that up a bit let's have a look normally I'd have a bit of tarp for putting the soil on because you always lose a bit in the grass but here because I'm putting an entire root ball in it doesn't matter I'm gonna have material left over anyway so, so look, let's gather all that put that in place I'm gonna tamp this down around it and the pot's flexing a bit so I'm not gonna use much force here you know I'm not gonna get my foot and really stamp down around it and potentially cause damage to the roots so with that in place we'll just have a little there we go that's perfect and now very gently and so this is a really nice dry root ball I'm gonna put that ah, oh look at that I started to break up you know what that's actually come out intact so it looks like I am separating these out after all okay that's a lot more disturbance than I'd actually hoped for so I'm just gonna be as gentle as I can so hopefully this one will be fine this one might survive but uh, yeah we'll see we'll give that our best shot all right next thing is I need mulch actually I'm gonna put that on top of those roots just to keep them moist Slit into it. Put that around, and then a nice bit of wood chip mulch, just to suppress the grass a little while it gets established. And then I'm going to use a nice collar, which we'll bring up to here. And I've got a very, I guess he's going to try and flip over. So. I've got a tiny little cane, so hopefully that will damage the roots barely at all. Let's go through the membrane, there we go. And here we are. That's our first pawpaw, so fingers crossed they'll do okay. So I'm going to put another one just a little ways that way, which is this one I've just pulled out of the, out of the, root, uh, out of the root ball. And then we've got another one to plant as well, but I'm not going to show you all of that. I'll just... Uh, I got these planted and I'll show you where we put them. That's all four in the ground. So that one's just been watered, it's just that it's half a bucket. So again, similar to the first ones I planted, we've got uh, that's a Juneberry, that is a that's a strawberry tree. We've got this teeny tiny pawpaw, and that's in line with the back of the pod, so it'll get a little bit of protection from north winds in winter. And then over here we're into I think that's a pear and an apple so it's nicely positioned you know there's nothing particularly near it. there's still a lot of space for understory plantings through here and then as we go over here to the next pod 
we've got exactly the same position where it's right in line behind the pod to get that protection and then these two <coughs> excuse me and these two have gone in exactly where i showed them earlier um, so yeah it turns out they've gone in as four it's a lot more root disturbance than i'd have liked so we'll just have to hope for the best and we'll see but uh, i'm not going to go back and refilm it and pretend that everything was perfect because that's not the real world so yeah we've got four pawpaw in a nice line nice south exposure in that direction bit of protection from the pods because even these of course will get a certain amount of protection from this pod from you know winds from the north it's a relatively sheltered space and also winds coming in from the west that barn protects us as well which isn't our barn but we get a lot of shelter from that so yeah we'll see how they do and uh, all in all it's a fairly diverse food forest becoming up here i mean i don't know how many trees we've put in and how many shrubs have gone in but it's a lot so yeah, poor poor <laughs> in the Scottish Highlands. It'll be an interesting experiment. <laughs>